Hey, what's up? Professor Wergelis here. Today, we are going to look at how to set up an Amazon EC2 Ubuntu instance, a little bit different than what we've set up in the past. We're going to secure the instance. We're going to configure it to be more like a production-like server. And then we're going to set up fail to ban and install a LAMP stack and get a Hello World page to display in the browser. Now, first things first, you need an Amazon AWS account. Go to Amazon AWS, so aws.amazon.com. Sign into the console. If you've taken my course before, you've already set up an account. If you haven't, go ahead and create an account. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can go under to the Amazon Educate program. Okay, so if I go to the Amazon Educate program, they have what's called a starter account. And essentially what they do is they give you money and it's uh, credits for Amazon AWS. And once the credits run out, well, then your resources run out and they'll terminate your resources. With a regular AWS account, you put in your credit card. If you're a new user, you'll get 12 months for free. Okay, well, it's easy to get 12 months for free. If you've set up an account, if you have another email address, go ahead and set up a new account. Or come over here and join the Educate program. The Educate program may take a few days to go through. So to follow along in the lectures, go ahead and sign up for a free account, and you can have the Educate account. A lot of times they'll give me the credit in the Educate program, and I'll go and apply the credit to my regular AWS account. When the credit runs out, it'll start charging my credit card. Okay, so now that we're becoming more professional, you'll definitely want to have an AWS account, maybe for your own purposes. Maybe you have your own personal website or you host a business uh, site or your resume. Uh, more than likely, you'll want to go ahead and set up your own personal AWS account. Okay, but as long as you have a Ubuntu, Amazon EC2 instance running, you'll be good for this course. Okay, so if you don't have an AWS account, go ahead and stop the video now and create one. If you have an account and you're ready to go with the money or the credits, then go ahead and proceed. We're going to log into the console and we're going to start a Ubuntu instance. So go ahead and log in. Make sure you're the root user. That way you have full control over the AWS account. And we're going to come over here to EC2. If you don't see it on your screen like it shows on mine, you can always click services up here at the top and then select EC2. Okay, for exams, for tests, for getting a job in the industry, you want to know what EC2 is. Look at what the definition, the textbook definition is. Why is EC2 better than, than buying your own server? What, uh, you know, what companies offer uh, cloud services, you know, which, what are the pros and cons of, of each company? These are things that would be good to know. So the dashboard changes frequently. Last year when we logged in, the dashboard looked different. Even last semester when I logged in, the dashboard looked different. So you'll want to make sure you stay up to date and make sure you continually create, create instances, create servers, Log into the portal, stay up to date by reading online documentation. Things are moving quickly in the, in the cloud services world, so make sure you're staying up to date. We're going to click on the launch instance button. Okay, we're going to launch an instance. You'll see for 2830, we launched, we launched an Amazon Linux AMI. They also have Amazon Linux 2. Uh, for Amazon Linux 2, they set up more stuff for you. Uh, but you'll see just the basic has Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, has PHP, MySQL. Okay, it also has Docker, which is very useful. Uh, Amazon Linux 2 provides similar things, but the kernel is a little bit different. Okay, it's a little bit different. This semester, we're actually going to set up a Ubuntu server. Last time it was 16.04. The stable version now is 18.04. Whether you have 16 or whether you have 18, both of them will be sufficient for this course. Okay, but it's good to stay up to date. So if you have the option, if you haven't created the server already, go ahead and set up Ubuntu 18. You'll see it's 64-bit x86 by default. Go ahead and click on select. And if you're signing up for that free account, 
you'll see that the T2 micro type, which is a small server, it only has one GB memory and only has one CPU, but that's good enough for this class. And in fact, even for setting up a social network like Facebook, you don't really need such a large server to host a website. So if I'm showing post and searching for post, I don't really need a big server to handle that because I'm just hosting a web page. But for Facebook, they need massive databases. And not only just one massive database, they probably have thousands of massive databases. And they're all simultaneously synchronizing with each other. Okay, that would be the difficult part for Facebook. But for just hosting a site, you can have a small instance. If I click on the note, you'll see it's the baseline level of CPU performance with the ability to burst above the baseline. If I hover over the, the free tier uh, eligible, it says that you can get up to 750 hours of micro instances each month for free. That's for the first 12 months from your sign-up date. Okay, well, if there's about 30 days in the month and 24 hours a day, Okay, you'll see you'll hit right about 720 hours. So if you get a message from Amazon AWS that says, hey, you're reaching 90% of your limit, that's okay. As long as you only have one instance running, you will not be charged for the first 12 months. And even if there's 31 days in the month, okay, you'll go right up to 744. So you're right under that 750-hour limit. Okay, now mine says T2 micro. Some students were saying they can only do T2 nanos. If you have to choose T2 nano or T2 micro, they're both will be sufficient for this course. Mine says T2 micro, so I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now this page can get very extreme, very serious, very detailed with what you can set up, or it doesn't have to be. Now in the cloud computing course, you'll go over this very uh, thoroughly talking about creating subnets and assigning your own IP and all the different uh, file systems that you could have. But for this class, we're just focusing on web servers, Amazon AWS. We're not going to go too big into the networking side of cloud computing. So for this page, you can leave everything default. For the storage, you'll see here's a message. Free tier eligible customers can get up to 30 gigabytes of SSD storage for free. They set the default up to eight. I have a lot of students about halfway through the semester. For some reason, they load audio files, video files up on their server for challenges or projects. And all of a sudden, the memory's full and its server's crashing and has a bunch of bugs. So I recommend to bump this up. You can do 20 GB. 25 BG, you could probably even put 30 GB there, but I like to be safe and just make sure I stay under the limit. So I'll go ahead and put 25 GB. The other important thing is to make sure you delete on termination. When I delete the, uh, when I terminate the instance, I want to make sure that this storage is also deleted because a lot of times if this is unchecked, you'll terminate the instance and then a month later you'll still have a five to $10 bill saying you owe money for the storage because you didn't delete the volume. So make sure you have this checked to delete on termination. Then we'll go ahead and click next. You also see you could have an encryption method. If you, if you're dealing with private data, like, um, healthcare data or, uh, you know, any type of data that needs to be HIPAA compliant or anything like that, you could definitely secure the drive, which is a new feature. They didn't have that uh, not too long ago. This is a new feature to be able to encrypt the drive. But for this class, we're not going to have private data, so let's leave it unencrypted. Okay, now this is important because for my AWS account, I may have five, six, seven instances running. So we're going to add a name key value pair. So the name will be, the key will be name, the value will be, you know, 4830 server or 7830 server. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put 4830 and 7830 server. Okay, so I'm going to add both of them there. For you, you could put 4830 or 7830 server. Both will work. And then go ahead and click on next. 
Now, this is important. This is the security group. This is going to be our firewall when you're accessing the server from the outside world. So the first thing that's default is SSH. You got to have SSH because you got to connect to the server through the terminal, through SSH in order to log in and configure it. So you got to have SSH, but also we're going to want to enable HTTP. Okay, HTTP is being able to access the server from a web browser, which is port 80. Now, Google, you'll see for uh, Amazon AWS here for the console, it says it's secure. If you log in through HTTP nowadays, Google will actually have a message here saying it's not secure. So we're going to fix that up as well later here in the semester, here in a few lectures. So we'll also want to enable HTTPS, which is port 443. For all of my exams, you're going to want to know some basic ports. What's port 22? Well, that's SSH. What's port 80? That's HTTP. What's for port 443? That's HTTPS. These are common ports that you should know, and you'll definitely be tested on them. You'll see here the source is custom. It's a bunch of zeros. That means it's allowed from anywhere. In fact, if I change it to anywhere, you'll see it remains the same. So if anybody wants to access this web uh, server or this server through HTTP or HTTPS, it will be allowed. Same with SSH. I'm going to click on Review and Launch. You'll see I'm creating a Ubuntu 18.04 server with the following security groups. You'll see it doubled some of them. That's okay. We left a lot of this default. We increased the storage size, and we added a name tag. That way we can differentiate if we have multiple servers running. Now, if you want to stay in that free tier limit, make sure you do not have a bunch of servers running. For this course, you'll only need one. And if you have other courses, you can still use the same server, depending on what server they want you to create, as long as it's a Ubuntu server. So you don't need a bunch of servers for this class. Just create one, and you can do all your assignments on that single server. Once it's set up, click on Launch. You can choose an existing key pair. You'll see my 2830 key pair, or you can create a new key pair. So you can call it 4830-key pair. You can call it 7830-key pair. I'm going to put both in mine, and I'm also going to put the semester, although you may not need to put the semester. You can just put 4830-key pair, 7830-key pair, whatever name is going to make you remember what key pair you're using. Now, you may have a key pair from before. I recommend that you create a new key pair. Every instance you create, start a new key pair. That will be more secure just in case anybody happens to get your previous key pairs. Make sure you download the key pair and store it in a good place that you'll remember. I have a directory for this course, and I create a directory called AWS Instance, and I'm going to go ahead and put my key pair in that folder. The other thing I like to do is go ahead and open up a cloud service like Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, the uh, Mizzou Box account, whatever it may be. Okay, go ahead and open this up. and put your PIM file on the cloud. That way, if your computer crashes, you get water on your computer, whatever it may be, you have that key pair file up on the cloud, so you're not gonna, use, you're not gonna lose it. Okay, a lot of students will put it on a flash drive, and then they lose their flash drive. They'll put it on just their computer. Their computer will crash. They forget their password, whatever the, reason may be now you have the key pair up on the cloud so if anything goes wrong you can still access your instance now it's possible to get back on your instance uh, if you lose the key pair i saw some articles i think you can contact the support and, and get back in it's just a pain in the butt okay you don't want to have to go through that process so do not lose your key pair it's very important not to lose that key pair so that's why I'm putting it up on the cloud. It's a habit that I have that I also recommend that you have. Go ahead and launch the instance. It'll give you the status. You can do view instances. You'll notice here it says pending, and you'll see I have a bunch of instances running. If I do a refresh, okay, it didn't happen that time. Try it again. Now it's running. 
Or I could sit there. I have to wait maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, and then it finally says running. For some reason, refreshing the browser, then we'll change the, uh, the web page quicker. Okay, so now it's ready. Now you're ready to connect. You can select the server, click connect, and follow the instructions here. We're going to SSH to the server in the next video, and then we're going to set up and secure the server and make it more of a production-like server. So stick with Professor Wergley's, and we'll see you in the next video.